Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to more Wargame Red Dragon. Today a 1v1 against an enemy Sergeant Major. It's not ranked, it's just a 1v1 and I decided to change things up a little bit. I'm using not Eurocore Motorized but Eurocore General today. Just to shake things up a little for myself as well as try some new stuff. The plan here is to start focusing on a Leclerc down the middle in Gulf. So my left flank in Alpha slash Bravo is going to be fairly lightly defended. Just a couple of Legionnaires. You can see them sitting there in the VAP 2013 on the far left. The middle is going to be where the Leclerc is going. It's going to be escorted by two Leopard 1A4s just to get more fire support, more gun output, as well as a bunch of infantry, notably reservists. They're going to have the fairly um, unwelcome job of getting shot at um, a lot. And that is going to give me, ideally, in the form of the Leclerc and the Leopard, some targets. That's the job. It's not a great job, but, well, somebody's going to have to do it. We have on the far right one VLRA going up with a uh, Commander Para Recon squad inside. Now, Gazelle Cannon moving ahead, backed up by, of course, the Fast Movers. That's two Amex Tenor Cs, a Crotal as well, and a Resupplier. Mostly there for the Kotal, because Kotals are notorious for running out of ammo really, really quickly. I want to make sure that thing keeps firing. Especially if there's a KA-52 in the works. So, let's go and take care of that KA-52. That's the plan, anyway. I decide to go very, very aggressive. Um, in hindsight, as this commentary is hindsight, that's not a good idea. And sending in a peace rein right now to try and take that bird down is too high risk, too little reward. You can see that my panther gets killed, the peace rein goes in. It does land a missile, but then loses track of the target, most likely because the K-52 has landed. And I pay for that by losing the peace rein. Too aggressive. Amex 10 RC is taking a lot of fire, the Crotal is wide out in the open. And my Leclerc and 1A4s are rushing forward to try and push in. My Jupiter didn't quite get the message that we were not pushing, so I'm now leading with a logistics truck. Fantastic plan. Let's do that. There is a couple of MTLBVs, but more importantly, a big gun. That looks like a T-72, and I suspect at this point it's a super heavy, especially considering the Leclerc is the only one that can actually deal damage. The 1A4s simply cannot. Now, he sends it a MiG-21 bis. Stunning the Leopard 1A4s, but not actually getting a stun on the Leclerc, which is very fortunate, so I can keep it moving. And he does pay for that by losing one of those jets. I believe the Kotal does his level best to try and take down the second one, but couldn't get the kill. At least both 1A4s survived. I was worried it was going to be something much worse that would actually kill the Leclerc, which would pretty much stop me in that push very, very quickly. Thankfully, not the case. Didn't happen. There's the MiG-21 bis, just showing off its dominance by just flying around my forces without any issue. Commander Para on the far right have been shot out of their vehicle, but survived. It's not something I can really deal with right now, so I'm just trying to keep my focus on the middle. And especially as an MI-8 MTV is suppressing and murdering the uh, recon squad, there's not a whole lot that I can do. Now, as all of this has been going on, I am going to save up, and there we go, get a Caesar. And I'm going to consistently tick, because I am in control of my two-pointer, and he's not. So that is going to give me a, a nice little lead, up until the point where he buys a CV. Which I was expecting would be any moment now. Now, that says some flank defense, especially considering that this guy has um, Gornostrelki on the far right. I should also be concerned that he might be landing something behind my lines. So a couple of units behind on the left should take care of that. Amex 10 RCs, I'm going to send those back. I was initially thinking of just repairing them uh, on scene. Or sorry, no, they have already returned. No, I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> anyway, one of them's half dead, the other one's half not. Uh, I'm going to take out the VDV. They're important targets. Modestroki, much less so. They're far less interesting. And I'm kind of hoping that that T-72BU is coming out to play again. But right now, it doesn't seem to be interested in a fight. Perhaps it's been damaged. Now, the Caesar is in position. It's next to the FOB, so I can start shooting. 
If I accidentally hit some reservists, that is unfortunate. But it's the cost of doing business, essentially. Let's get another recon squad, because beyond the two MX-10 RCs, I have no recon. Leclerc, constantly under cover of smoke, moving back and forth. I know the reservists are going to die, so let's bring in a few more. And let's just bring both of the 10 RCs, which are half dead, back to base. Now I'm actually doing it to make sure that they survive another turn. I need these things to come back at some later point. Leopard 1A4s are patiently awaiting a resupply vehicle so that they can get repaired as well. Over on the far left, the transports that you just saw, the VAP 2013s, those are the transports from the Legionnaires, which are defending my left flank. And right now they don't have a job, so I just decided, you know what, we're going to send them into Charlie, because I might be able to find a CV there. Leclerc pulled back into the tree line, now no longer enjoying the benefit of reconnaissance, it's going to have to wait. It's just going to have to kind of sit there and get its critical damage fixed, which is the damage that was done by one impact from the Factoria missile. It's one of the worst missiles in the game, but it managed to hit and reset the fire computer on the Leclerc. And seeing as there's a T-72BU around, I am not at all interested in trying to take a fight with a BU in my damaged condition. Now at this point, he goes for the kill on the Crotal, and the Roland shoots down the T-70, sorry, the Su-27M. It's a really expensive kill, and he goes, unfair. And I thought, okay, um, I'm not exactly sure what is unfair. But he explains that he didn't know. <laughs> he simply didn't know that I had an anti-air platform there at that point, beyond the Crotal. So he wasn't exactly expecting the jet, the really expensive jet, at 200 points to get shot down. Oh well. Um, there is a Roland. Or there isn't a Roland. It depends on what you believe. Red pill or blue pill. More reservists have arrived at the front line eventually. And on the other flank, on Charlie, I'm going to do a little bit of, well, being annoying, generally. Just trying to distract the opponent, trying to force him to spend his attention elsewhere, and also attack in the middle, ideally, at the same time. MiG-21 BIS comes in, and this one is definitely going to try and take down the Leopard, and it succeeds, it gets a Leopard, but it pays for that by crashing into the ground. And look who's back. The K-52 and the T-72BU. Now, he skillfully smoked off my HGM over on the right side of the screen, so I cannot actually get a side shot on that T-72BU, sadly. We're just going to have to try and get that thing dueled out by a Leclerc, which is difficult. Leclerc, shorter range, generally a higher rate of fire. Uh, I'm not sure about the veterancy on that BU, though, so that's a bit of a problem. My 2013s have found a target in the form of a couple of Skrejets, so there is most likely going to be VDV approaching there, and there's not much that I can do to help them, so they both get destroyed. There's the BU. Leclerc goes for the kill. The BU takes some damage, but also damages the Leclerc, and the Leclerc does not have as much damage, or as much um, armor as the BU, so I'm going to pull it back, try and repair it. As you can see, I am definitely not um, the best player when it comes to smoking, pushing, and keeping your super heavies constantly on the move and constantly aggressive I like to take it a bit safer because losing a Leclerc is not strictly the end of the match you can definitely come back from it but let's say it's not good for my morale so if I at all can prevent that thing from getting lost I will do just that and there's the BU with the spotting capability of the K-52 would probably recognize that the threat of the Leclerc is gone and it's going a bit more aggressive now the K-52 and the MI-24P there are hovering low, so I was already hitting them with the Caesar. And I'm now also shooting at them with the Crotal. And the Crotal does get the kill on the MI-24P, even though it couldn't see it anymore. These are infrared fire and forget missiles. They don't care that you're no longer visible. Now, I have been getting some comments over the last couple of videos. Why do you still have the unit viewer up? This is because it allows me, especially in these 1v1s, to very quickly get an idea of what I'm facing, what I'm fighting. Because just there, it was just, just the icon and I didn't have the unit viewer open, I couldn't identify it as a scratch yet. So that is why I had the unit viewer open, and that's why I still have it open. To make sure that I keep 
very, very quick identification capabilities around if something gets lit up by any of my reconnaissance units. So in case you weren't clear, that's why. Just very, very quickly getting new information. One Crotal has been fixed, the other one has been resupplied. Time to start dealing with that MI8 on the right and also bring in a CV. I'm already ticking a plus three and much to my surprise, he still hasn't captured Charlie. At this point, I'm kind of expecting that thing to come in at any point, so I'm just shelling the general position where the CV might go in Charlie. But hey, if he wants to let me tick plus three for this long, then I'm all for it. And I'm going to make it worse by trying to get a CV into this sector here. It's not a very easy CV to hide. It is definitely risky. But, oh, hello. Um, at least now we know it only has fairly low veterancy. Missile out and misses. Lost line of sight. Anyway, um, it's not very easy to hide a CV in Gulf. You're going to be either out in the open or you're going to be in one of the fairly predictable locations. So there's no great spot to get yourself into to hide a CV. So I just decided to put it on the town to at least give it a modicum of cover. Relocating the Caesar every once in a while to try and make it difficult to get that thing detected. And at this point, VAP2013 comes in. It's already getting shot at by HGMs. So what I want to do here is let the Legionnaires that are inside the 2013 go first so that my MX-10RCs don't get HGM'd to death. And there's the BU again. Leclerc is moving back into position. Roland's also around because there might still be another HGM plane in his deck. You have quite a few options when it comes to this uh, Russian deck that he is using. Tiger Hap dealing with the MI-8. It's a bit of an expensive option, but I'm also keeping it around to potentially deal with the KA-52 later. But in a damaged condition, that's not a great plan. So let's pull it back, let's get it resupplied, and let's get it ready for another fight at another time. What I'm really trying to do is save up for another Leclerc, but I essentially don't have to, because that side shot wiped out the BU. There we go. That was his unit. That was his key unit in this particular uh, area of the map. So at this point, barring HGMs, I should be able to capitalize on this. And arguably I should have done that with motorized units instead of mechanized, because they're just a bit faster. But hey, I wanted to try and play around with two Leclerc's. Uh, I was having a good time, why not? I'm also going to have to invest now in an ASF. Because if, at some point, he does buy another anti-tank plane, I'm going to have to have some form of an answer for that. Or I'm going to be in trouble. That could be one, but I believe it's in fact a seed aircraft. Missile goes for the K-52, but does not get the hit. That one did. So the K-52 is likely going to go back and repair. And the Kotal is going to go back and resupply. So, at least that threat has been dealt with for a little bit. Incoming missile on the Leclerc. That was a bad hit as well. Probably a side shot. And this Leclerc is taking a really dangerous road, especially considering that I might be getting flanked there. I need to get some defenses. MX 10RC, VBL Mistral, and uh, sorry, VLRA Mist. No, uh, yeah, it's a VBL Mistral. Um, and that is going to have to do it for me to defend that side. It's anti air, it's anti tank, anti infantry, if you will. And that's going to have to do it. Now, at this point, he has captured Charlie, he has captured Foxtrot, and I know where the CV is in Charlie, because I saw a helicopter park the CV right in the middle of the town. I've been firing at it with the Caesar every now and then, I just wasn't exactly able to deal that much damage with it. Now, let's bring the NTR forward. Let's get the other NTR back, because the Kotal does not have cover there. And let's prepare the other Leclerc for further combat operations after it's been repaired. I know there are mortars around somewhere, but they just stopped firing by the time that I was zoomed in. And considering that I'm at 410 points and still ticking a plus one, I don't really feel like I need to be very worried. I don't need to be very aggressive, but I do want to take full control over Gulf. I want to get full control over that sector so I can cut off reinforcements along the main road from Charlie to Bravo and potentially do a push there later. So I'm already trying to think ahead and go, okay, where do I want to attack next? And how can I make that easier for myself? And of course, having two Leclerc's just cut any reinforcement infantry to pieces 
from the flank would definitely be a big help. Now, I thought there was a Cedar craft coming for me, and I was right. But I don't respond in time, and the Roland dies. That's my second Roland that died, by the way. And this Krotal also dies. So now I don't have any anti-air anymore. I still have some in the deck. But my air and tier on the ground has all been destroyed. At this point, I'm going, okay, so you spent quite a bit on golf. I neutralized your BU. I neutralized most of your sport vehicles. What does he have on Bravo? Well, a CV, that's for sure. But it seems like he's not quite happy with the position of the CV because he immediately moves it out of the way and takes it somewhere else. Reservist pushing down and they immediately run into Sapri. So that is going to be the next target for the Caesar. The Panther, mm, I thought about using it, but ended up not using it because I don't know anything about the NTR situation around. Both Leclerc's sitting out in the open. Very dangerous and bad move. I should have put them into cover sooner because those two tanks are very expensive. And because I suspect that there might not be anything left in Gulf, considering that my Caesar and Reservist earlier in Gulf were able to take out most of their infantry, we should be able to go. Just go. I know that there is still an HGM threat around somewhere. So in order to try and spot that, I'm using the Martyrs, and uh, the Martyrs are going to drop off their infantry, as well as get support from the Commander Para. When it comes to the ATGMs, I'd rather sacrifice the Leopard 1A4, or use it as a meat shield, rather than my two expensive Leclerc's. So they're going to have to be a bit more patient. They will, however, get an opportunity to deal more damage. They're just going to have to wait a while. Big hit on the Martyr 2, immediately pulling it back. And I know the Factoria cannot be far, because those missiles came right from that attack marker, right there. And there it is. There's the Factoria. It does succeed in murdering one of my martyrs. That was um, unexpected, because those missiles generally aren't very act accurate. Um, they are definitely against tanks, not very deadly. But when it comes to a fairly outdated tank, or a not very heavily armored infantry fighting vehicle like a martyr, and I mean... On the scale of infantry fighting vehicles, the Martyr is very heavily armored. Uh, it was able to get a hit, actually two, which surprised me all the more, and kill off the Martyr. So yeah, that Factoria group definitely paid for itself. And now my Leopard <laughs> is chasing a Tor. And for some reason, it can just about get a good line of fire, and then it can't, and then it can, and then it can't. It's the tree line here. Shot very narrowly misses the Tor. And now the KA-52 is trying to get involved. And I don't have any anti-air. I do have a Krotal coming in, but it's a bit late. Now, I do need to defend that flank with the Krotal that's coming in, because that Scrajet can make a whole bunch of holes in the side of the Krotal very, very quickly. So let's also bring a couple of Legionnaires and secure that flank, and uh, maybe push back there later. Again, trying to think ahead what would make my life easier, and that definitely qualifies. Now the KA-52 might be able to look at my tank and my recon infantry up close, but it cannot actually do that much more about it. So just pushing back with the Tiger Hap, letting him know that I have that and using it as a credible threat should be enough. There is the seed aircraft. He goes, fucking Factoria, I'm not sure why. Because the Factoria definitely paid for itself. But I think... He's a bit annoyed with it because it actually missed my last Krotal. Which, I understand, ticked him off. So, Krotal moving forward as quickly as it can. Tiger Hap going for the K-52. K-52 going back at the Tiger. And I get the kill, but I do take some damage. And it is not quite enough to take down both helicopters. But taking down the K-52 is a big win. Turn off all the guns. And let's have the Martyr do some damage against that ammo 24 p which has already been damaged. It just needs to get finished off. Shouldn't be too hard now, should it? Just a bit of damage. And with some smoke, I can also start working the Leclerc's again. This, however, is a really risky move. Because by this move, I am opening up the Leclerc's flank. So that's what the smoke screen is there for. To try not take hits on the flank and try to prevent any uh, planes that are coming in from getting a good line of sight. So I'm going to pop in and out of smoke constantly and deal damage as much as I can. And there's another KA-52. 
So once again, I'm going to need the Krotal. There's the Victoria team inside the building. He was definitely spreading these guys around. There's a Potnos. I would love to kill that. Leclerc is not necessarily in a great spot to do that. So I immediately tasked the Caesar to go for that. Rafale is still on patrol. VAP 2013 is moving. Legionnaire is moving up. At this point, I'm slowly but steadily starting to encroach on Foxtrot. And that's the job. That's the goal. I'm going to get the open terrain. Because Bravo right now is not my best area of operations. And at this point I was noticing, holy crap, I'm floating a lot of points. So let's call in a couple of Leopard 2s. And let's start pushing this side a bit more. There we go. That's another Scrajet down. I can start moving up the rest of my support vehicles on that side. And smoke up the place a bit more and push with the Leclerc's once again. Another Factoria. Probably the one that might have been the... Well, that was the expected killer of uh, the Kotal, but missed. MI8 trying to dump a whole bunch of rockets onto my Commander Para and thankfully does not exactly know where they are. And by some miracle they don't even get hit at all. Could have been a lot worse. There's a Skrejet. Was a Skrejet. And with the Factoria dead, I should be able to just take the building. So let's continue moving up. And uh, something I kind of forgot about was the Panzer Grenadiers. They're still sitting in the tree line in Gulf. There is another Skrejet coming in. So once again, the Leclerc's are going for it. I'm going to try and wipe out as many of these guys as possible. Because there is most likely VDV inside. Now, why he called in a Yak at this point, I'm not too sure. Because he's not likely to really contest my Rafale. And he's not running that many air operations himself. So I don't exactly see the benefit of trying to kill my um, Rafal. At this point though, he gives up. Now, I wanted to also do a second part to this video where we're going to go over what he can see. What his plan is or what his plan might have been. So let's jump over to Wargame and see what he had. So here we go, second part of the video. Let's have a look at what he was bringing and where he was bringing it to. Left flank, Skrajet, middle mostly, K-52, Osa, a bunch of Jalos, three of those, a T-72BU and a whole bunch of Mudstrelki. So in essence, he's doing the polar opposite to what I'm doing, or the, the Russian counterpart. He has a bunch of sacrificial infantry units, he has a heavy tank, he has anti-air and he has fire support vehicles. Now, the BTR Jalo doesn't exactly convert to an AMX 10RC. I would argue the AMX 10RC is better because it has good stealth, or what is it, medium stealth? Yeah, medium stealth. Uh, this does allow them to spot the enemy sooner than get spotted, though. And much like myself, I'm using two um, 10 RCs to try and spot. He's using his K52. So we're both fairly reliant on that one recon unit. Over on the right, there is one VDV probably defending Bravo. So just this whole area didn't see any kind of action. There comes the Peace Rhine and gets shot at by the Tor. And I think... Yeah, it was either the Tor or the K-52 itself that was able to kill it. You can see that it, it did take damage, but not that much. Now the Jalos kind of overextend. And they don't exactly have the survivability to deal with being overextended. So my HGM might... No, it's the tank. I think it might be the Leclerc that try and takes it out. I'm also trying to mop up Modestrelki and VDV there. There's the Factoria, there's the other one. And this is just where he dropped off Gornos. But that allowed him to start spotting this. And that wiped out my units over there. So that's fair. MiG-21 Biss coming in. That's the one that's going to try and stun the tank. Now... I wonder what he can see, because his K-52 is hovering low. He's just relying on frontline spotting, and he doesn't have anything defending this. Which is really interesting. Because generally, when I focus on this side, and I don't do that that often, I always send some infantry, generally shock or better, to hold this line here. To make sure that nothing thunders down this road. And that's fairly usual, in my experience. Um, especially when the enemy wants to do a recoilless rifle push. They can do that along here. And in this case, the BU would have been able to cover that. But it wouldn't exactly have been spotting it. Now he can see two damage 1A4s. Which explains why the MiG-21 Biss was essentially going for that. Because it couldn't see anything else. 
In reverse, I can only see his aircraft because my guys haven't made contact with his guys yet. So at this point, when it comes to recon, we are definitely even. There we go. Now I'm seeing the Motostrelki. Motostrelki, not great infantry. Um, okay weapons, but definitely a bit better than my militia. So these guys definitely rely on the fire support that they're getting from the mortar. Now one thing I'm seeing over here is that most of his infantry is uh, stacked. You got 6 and 10 very close there. This one's a bit further spread out and the BU is there to fire support. What I should have done was push right for the BU, although this weapon, the LRAC 73 with 14 AP, this thing wouldn't have laughed it off, but it definitely wouldn't have done that much damage. Pushing in with the Leclerc is something I was just very uncomfortable doing with, because um, these guys with their RPG-7s do have an okay chance of getting an accidental side shot on my Leclerc, whereas my reservists, not that much, because they don't tend to live that long. Now, over here he has the Victoria, over there... Yeah, it's just the VDB. Does he even see my push? No. Well, if you want to call it a push, I mean my distraction. It's just nothing. There is an Osa there, and the K-52 is being repaired. But that's about it. And you can see just how little recon he has on the field. One K-52 and BRDM coming in now. That's it. There's no other reconnaissance. My reconnaissance really needs to bug out and get out of there. Bringing in flank defense. He is bringing in another HGM unit. Probably another Factoria. Reservista are all dying, but I've got almost all of his Mozdrelki here. Oh, and he's finishing the job for me using his own mortar. That's interesting. There you go. This was an interesting move. I'm not exactly sure why he started smoking off my HGM. Because at this point, I can't see anything, but he's not pushing with the T-72BU. He's just He has all weapons turned off. Interestingly. Maybe he's preparing something. Maybe he's readying something. Oh, yep. Hit it. Didn't actually kill it. That would have been interesting. There comes the MiG-21 this again. And... Rocket pod strike on the Leopard 104, but it pays for it. K-52 can definitely see stuff now. There we go. It can see all the reservists. It can see the guys over there. It can see my mortar. He's not shooting back with his mortar yet, but even if it did, it wouldn't be very accurate. Because it doesn't have a whole lot of confidence at the moment. There's the BU against the Leclerc. So I could briefly see that. Oh, I hit the ammo box. I'm not a MiG. I'm a 24P. Mm. That was going to cost me a lot of reservists. This is a fairly expensive way of dealing with it. I would say two Jalos. For 60 points might have been a better option. You're not getting rocket pods, to be sure, but you are getting a rapid fire gun, which would have been nice. Now, all of his infantry has now died. His anti-air is still one Osa and the Tor. His recon is once again too reliant on the K-52. Because once again, it's going back to base. So once again, he can't see anything. There, it's completely blind. I can see his helicopter, but I have a better chance of spotting something the moment that it sticks its nose out with the commandos and the 10 RCs over there. There's the BU again. This is the point when I should have pushed with Panzer Grenadiers. I just was saving up for something else and I was buying CVs. So that is where my money went, essentially. And because of that, I couldn't actually bring in the uh, Panzer Grenadiers, but I didn't have to in the end, because... Where is it? Here it is. That's the side shot on the BU. With the Leclerc. That was expensive. Now he doesn't have anything but one HGM in the middle. So, this is the point where I'm still trying to improve. Figuring out when the enemy is weak. Just, I should have been pushing more with reservists and figuring out, hold on, there's nothing there. Oh wow, I actually hit the CV. Huh. This is interesting, the fact that he keeps it there, because he should have been moving it around the moment that he noticed it was getting hit. But he didn't. And he's also bringing in a BRDM to you. Yep, there it is. 
At this point, he seems to be trying to potentially cut off my reinforcements using the Factoria and the Skrejet there. But he doesn't have any recon forward, so the ATGM couldn't actually see anything. Commander's going for it. Factoria's shooting back. I immediately mark it for myself. Leopard 1A4 getting the kill. K52 coming in. Look, there's nothing there. He relocated his tour. Uh, his Osa is still sitting there. There's another tour. He's over-invested on NTR. The only plane that I used was very early on. That was the Peace Rhine. And later on, I used the Rafale. I never used a bunch of helicopters. I only used the Tiger Hap once. And I'm about to use it again. So he's over-invested in NTR. And he's under-invested in ground forces. Like regular VDV. VDV in here with the backup of a Skrejet could have prevented the Commander's Para from going in and probably would have been overrun in the second phase as the Martyr IIs and the Panzer Grenadiers showed up. But I would have been a bit more careful. And now that I can essentially roam free with a couple of Leclerc's, I can see why he gave up. Because I already took down his really expensive anti-tank uh, plane, the SU-27M. I'm starting to wipe out his reconnaissance units one by one. I'm pushing on his HGMs. So the Leclerc's are facing less and less and less when it comes to their natural predators, if you will. Insofar as you want to call a metal machine a natural predator. So that was the game. Anyway, um, interesting push with the Leclerc's. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. And I'll see you soon for more Wargame.